What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today I have for you a very interesting, let's say, first episode of a series because I'm going to build a, an integrated phase change system into a chassis. So we're talking about compressor, uh, evaporators, condenser, gas, refrigerant gas. So uh, like a, a fridge or an air conditioning, but a small in a small version inside the chassis dedicated to cool the CPU. This is something that was used in the past uh, with the VapoChill and that kind of system. But this time we have new technologies, um, a much more better efficiency and some interesting things that I want to record in full from the theoretical part of this video to the final product. So you can see how it's made, the physics behind it, and well, you can decide if it's worth uh, to make some like a production system and to utilize as a daily driver. There are some uh, uh, things that needs to be taken in consideration, like condensation or other stuff. But uh, you will see the whole process, and then you can see if it's worth or not to do something like this for a daily system. So stay tuned, and uh, let's get straight to the point. Before getting into the details about the single components, I have to explain you in general how this is possible. So we are talking about the refrigeration cycle. So we take advantage of the property of uh, a refrigerant gas. We are going to com compress that gas, uh, then to expand it, and you know making the gas change in the state. That's why it's called phase change because we are shifting the refrigerant gas from a, a, a state to another. And in the process, we can move a, a high quantity of, uh, of heat, of energy, from the CPU to the final part, that is our radiator of a custom loop. So we are going to move the energy, the heat, from the CPU to our radiator. And this system can make us do it in a very efficient way at a point that we can generate a negative uh, uh, temperature on the CPU. We are talking about uh, negative 40, negative 30 under load. So we are really moving a lot of heat from the CPU to the radiator. And this is really uh, efficient because of the new technology that I'm using here. But now I'm going to explain exactly every component, the role that have in it, and uh, how it's made. Let's talk about the compressor. The compressor is like the heart of the system because the power of the compressor is what helps us to generate that uh, exchange of temperature. So if you want to have uh, a good result, so a good cooling power, you, you need a, a big compressor or, or best, a powerful compressor. This is a brushless uh, motor. So this is the latest technology, brushless and inverter technology. So it means that it can uh, raise or slow the RPM of the, 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 the motor of the compressor to generate uh, uh, the, the pressure we need. So it kind of uh, adapts itself uh, to the load. So we can have a, a phase where is uh, is not doing much. So the compressor will slow itself. So less noise and less power consumption. And in some cases where we need to absorb more heat from the CPU, it will automatically ramp up the speed to keep the system running. So this is a very interesting technology because uh, we will see uh, when I set up everything, we can have like uh, uh, 40 watts in idle and 100 and 140 watts uh, uh, when under load. And this is very important because uh, the efficiency is quite okay. I mean, it's not like a, a, an air cooler or a water cooler. We have to, to put some power in it. But in my opinion, it's not too much to have like a, more 100 more watts to achieve that kind of performance. So what the compressor does is take the gas refrigerant, so compress the gas, and uh, let's say move the gas through this small thin pipe, and we can obtain a gas that is high pressure, high temperature. And then the gas will shoot in this pipe here, don't, don't mind the, the the bad solder work that I did here, the brazing work, because uh, when the product is finished, I'm going to redo everything and make it more, uh, let's say, aesthetically pleasure. But the point is that the gas will be compressed and going through this line that I'm going to show you the next component and we understand. Then the gas at the end of the cycle is going to be inside this bigger tube here. So it's going to be sucked in here in a form of vapor and then compress again. 
and go to the cycle. So now we are going to see the next component in line. Here we have a neat exchanger, a plate heat exchanger. In this case, we have 10 plates. How this is going to help us to make our refrigeration cycle? So this is an unusual component in this kind of system because I wanted to use a computer radiator, so the classic system that you will find in a custom loops with a, with a pump and a radiator. That's why I have this kind of tubing. So this is connected like if it were, let's say, a GPU, a CPU water block. So this will be functioning in loop with a custom loop with a pump and radiator, everything. So we have the water here that goes inside the, the heat exchanger, but not connected to our gas line. So this will, let's say, cool down this heat exchanger using our existing custom loop. So we have the water of our custom loop that goes through here and cool down the heat exchanger because, because we have the gas that came from our compressor and the gas will be at high pressure, high temperature in a gas form inside here. And this will do the condensation part. So at the end of this, uh, this exit here, we will have a liquid. So the gas will turn into a liquid at around 35 degrees, more or less, depends uh, as well, of course, of the room temperature. But in the test that I did, uh, the gas from will be like uh, something like 100 degrees or 7, 70, 80, so very hot, but in a gas form. And this will transform the gas in a liquid. And at the end here, we will have a liquid that is around uh, uh, 35 degrees Celsius and more or less at uh, 15 bar, 12 bar, depends as well on the gas refrigerant that I will use. So this is the first change of phase. So we, we, we go from a gas to a liquid. And here with this liquid, we will go to the next phase and I will explain you the next component. And now we have another very important part of our system, the evaporator. The evaporator, in fact, is this small part here. It's like, a, let's say, a, GP, a CPU water block. So it's made similar, so we have some inside and uh, is used to, as the, the name suggests, to evaporate. So we received the liquid from here, from the compressor, and this one is called a visor glass. So we can monitor the state of our gas. So we should make sure that here all we have is a liquid. So if I see vapor inside or gas, I have to add refrigerant when I'm going to charge the system. I'm going to constantly look to this visor and charge the gas until I see here a liquid flowing. So when I have the, the, the refrigerant gas transformed in a liquid form and I can see liquid here, the liquid will go through this line. This strange thing that you see here is some is like the is, is a filter. So it's nothing that a filter. So here, if we have like impurities or dust or whatever, it goes through this filter. This filter is going to block because now our liquid is going to go through this uh, that is called capillary tube. So it's a small tube that you can see here. This tube is going to make the liquid at high pressure going slowly because it's very, it's very thin inside. I think it's like uh, 0.1 millimeters. So going through this long, this is like 1.5 meters long or something like that. I did the calculation. So you have to calculate the, 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 the exact length of this capillary tube to obtain some, uh, the value you need to subtract the heat. So our liquid going through this tiny, tiny capillary tube goes here. And when it reaches the evaporator, it's going to spray this liquid like, you know, the spray from to clean the windows. So when it reaches the evaporator here, it transforms our liquid into a vapor. So the, the name evaporator. And doing that, we have a vapor that is very low in pressure because now we have the, the compressor attached to this big pipe here. So the compressor will suck everything and create a depression, so a negative pressure. So the gas that is sprayed into the evaporator now is a vapor at very low pressure and 
based on the refrigerant that we're going to use, I think I'm going to use propylene that uh, uh, in the vapor state is going to be like negative 50. Okay, that under load, so we are going to, to suck the load from the CPU with the gas and we'll probably be at like negative 30 in gaming or something like that, ne negative 40 based on the CPU and the overclock that we are going to do. So changing this state, our gas now is in vapor state and to be in this form is going to, to, to move all the heat from the evaporator to the compressor. And so this will make a lot of ice and you will see when this will be in function. So the evaporator make that our refrigerant gas goes from the liquid state to a vapor state. And by doing so, we obtain a very low ne uh, negative temperature. So we have uh, now this part that is very, very cold and the vapor goes through this pipe and here will be again into the compressor. And by doing so, we complete the cycle. So the compressor is going to take that gas in a vapor form and it convert it to a gas. So we have the uh, high pressure liquid converted into a very low pressure vapor. And this, this is the end of our cycle. But now we have to look to the last part of the component so we can have the complete system. And to finish our roundup of the components, here we have the controller that is very, very important because we are using a brushless inverter motor and being an inverter is because the, the, the speed of the compressor is variable. To make it variable, to control that, uh, that up and down in the, in the rotation of the compressor, we need uh, this uh, controller. So it's a logic board essentially that uh, help us to speed up or slow down the motor. And uh, I can say that uh, the default uh, settings uh, is just perfect for what I'm going to do. Uh, so I can run this uh, uh, directly as it is, and I can obtain like a, a low power consumption in idle and uh, the, the compressor ramping up to the maximum speed when I, I stress a lot the CPU, if I do overclocking or if I'm doing rendering. So this automatically goes from a low consumption, providing the necessary cool to the CPU, to the full speed when I really push the limit of the CPU. And then I have to try this. I didn't try when I make the first uh, uh, test. This is a, a pulse generator. So I can generate a signal, an electronic, a digital signal here to control uh, the, the, the logic board and the compressor. So I can say it's like, it's like a manual overclock. Uh, this is like the, the boost of a CPU or GPU. So it dynamically changed the, the speed of the compressor based on the load and it works pretty good. But with this, I can control manually the speed of the compressor. That means that if I want, I can set this to the minimum, obtaining like uh, almost zero noise and the right uh, uh, cooling for the CPU to be at idle. And when I want to push the CPU for benchmark or when I, if I want to do some rendering or stuff, I just crank it up to the maximum and make sure that the compressor run at full speed, giving me all the cooling power that I need. So I'm going to make probably a switch to switch from the automatic settings to the manual settings and control the motor and the compressor with the, these tiny things. So this is all the components that I'm going to use for this kind of experiment. So in the next videos, I'm going to, well, the next video, I'm going to uh, set up the system with a motherboard and probably a 12900K, KS, so let's see, uh, some kind of a big CPU. I'm going to charge the system and show you the power consumption, the temperature that we are going to, to obtain and how fast I can run that uh, CPU. And probably the next uh, uh, episodes will be trying to make this system fit inside uh, a chassis and you know, redo the, the brazing and make it uh, aesthetically uh, a good work and integrate this system into a chassis that, of course, it must look good and work in a proper way. So for today is everything. Make sure that you subscribe to see the next episode and see you in the next one.